heading of the Stennis 324 True. Is that, uh... Uh, on F2, or I'm sorry, F9, I got 323. The script will tell you, I just checked that he's reporting BRC 317. Or is that in Lot ATC? Well, you click on uh, Magnetic instead of True and it'll convert for you, supposedly, or you do it yourself. Well, that's pretty aggravating. The draw distance for smoke is pretty close in in this patch. Really? I was noticing that last night it being very far. Oh, here. Which, uh, on the 326, the latest? Dumb question for you, Stahl. Hmm? Um, where do you set your squawk at in the F-14? <laughs> well, you gotta be in the back seat or you use the overlay. How do you use the over- you're talking about the uh, radio overlay? Yeah, the SRS one. That's the only way to do it in the front seat. So, not a dumb question. Not letting me input anything in the SRS. Are you? Well, yeah, you have to be in the plane. I'm in the plane. Sorry, I was. Uh, uh, so you're in the plane, and you can't input anything. Yeah. The transponder is on. I'm getting a green light, but it's just showing me all zeros. And it won't let me click. Do you want me to hop in the back seat and set it for you? Yeah. Uh, would that be very much trouble? Actually, that first digit's a lot of trouble. It's like it's stuck.
let me ask this. When you're saying overlay, are you talking about the in-game overlay or like the, the sort of separate window one? The separate window that says cockpit controls? Let me make sure I'm connected to the right server, first of all. Server 2. Yeah, I see. Does uh, does the transponder have zeros or dashes? Um, it says zeros in, huh. in SRS. Okay, do you have 1.7.7? For? SRS, the version. Oh. Um... Yep. Well, I'm fresh out of ideas. I, I can type in mine. There aren't, or, well, actually, if you look across the bottom of the SRS window, do you have green lights for VoIP game and uh, whatever the other one is? Yeah, everything but lot ATC. Okay. I mean, try, you could always try closing SRS, opening it again, and see if that helps. Seems like you're in the right spot. Double check mine. Hold on. Are you ready to start this? Uh, yeah, whenever you guys are. Who is not ready to start this? Anybody with a lot of ATC, just verify uh, Stealthy K is clocking 4323. Checking. I see what you mean about that, uh, first number. Yeah, it sticks. But I. I don't know, Asu. I, I was able to just, I just double clicked the zeros and just typed in my number. So as long as it's verified working. Um, yeah, I mean, I, short of restarting SRS, I don't know what to tell you. I need to come check. Showing, uh, no transponder no information for either uh, two player, oh, now three actually, because that's. Four three two three stall wait on yeah. Yep, okay, so then it is working. Yeah, it's working for uh, stall. Uh Hawaiian. Did that uh, transponder code automatically generate Stahl's name uh, when he entered his transponder code? It should. Oh, Assuming that he's using the it, one he's assigned. It, it did? That's awesome. Discord. No, I heard you over Discord. Crap, that's what I thought. For a reason, I... Alright.
here, come check. Is anyone not ready? Okay, Fa, your show. Alright, so what we'll do this morning, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go through kind of a quick brief again here, one that we did the other night. But we'll go through it again just to kind of knock off the dust there and make sure that we're all on the same sheet of music. Uh, if you guys want, if you don't have it already, if you take a look in either my uh, instructor window, uh, there will be a file that's labeled up as... It's going to be labeled up as um, essentially the case 3 recovery procedures. Or you can take a look in the air-to-air -air, uh, AIC, or correction, the AIC training window, and uh, the same brief is pinned in there if you don't have it. All right, so first of all, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, thanks for being here so early in the morning. Uh, drinking my coffee as we go through this, but uh, we'll have some fun today. So today, overall, we're going to conduct the case three recoveries. Uh, and depending on the time and uh, availability, uh, we may get uh, two or three different sessions in here going on. So uh, on slide three, we'll go over the overall admin. Uh, I see that uh, <clears throat> a couple of people have already spawned in, specifically stall. Um, the way it's set up is once you spawn into the game, you're going to spawn about uh, approximately 80 plus nautical miles outside of the carrier. Uh, and that's to allow time to get everything set up and then also allow time to get you to your holding positions uh, in time for your, your pushes to the carrier. For today's first event, it's going to be unlimited fuel. However, though, as we go into the next sessions of the next several days and the next week, um, the fuel uh, will be turned back on. And again, it's, it's to simulate real world type stuff. All right, if you haven't already, when you sign in, just as an FYI, uh, my DCS has been giving me problems. Uh, I'm running everything strictly out of what ATC and SRS. I don't have DCS up this morning. Um, but I uh, kind of recommend when you do sign in, go ahead and sign in with your uh, aircraft side number followed by your call sign. That way, at least if anybody's using DCS, then it's easy to break out who is who in the zoo. Uh, your side number should correspond to the, your last three digits of your mode 3 squawk that has been assigned to you. So, for example, stall 2K, uh, you would sign in as 323 slash stall. Overall comm plan today is going to be but 3, uh, frequency 285, decimal 675. Uh, don't get too hung up on the button numbers. The thing to focus on really is going to be the frequency that's out there. So However, you want you, uh, to turn the channelize your off. radios uh, for these frequencies so you don't have to manually get it in. However you want to do that in the aircraft is completely up to you. So four frequencies we'll Thanks, be using sir, today is going to be but like 3, 285, decimal 675. That's going to be departure. Uh, Marshall is going to be 285.0. That's going to be, uh, if you channelize it, should be button 16. And then once you get your uh, Marshall approach instructions, then you're going to either be pushed to a button 15 or a button 17 or two different approach frequencies. Gear up. 
uh, if able, uh, all aircraft should be able to should monitor button three at all times. Uh, that way, if anybody gets lost on the comms, at least we as controllers can jump in on a get well frequency, if you will, so that we can uh, establish comms with you at that point. So if you're able, monitor button three or 285.675 at all times. All right, once everybody gets spawned in, everybody's kind of ready, then uh, we'll go ahead and get a, uh, a roll call there with everybody that's in the players. Uh, and then once everybody's ready, then we'll go ahead and put out, uh, I, I as the uh, departure, as the controller today, uh, we'll put out a 99 call um, that everybody checks in on button three. And at that point, then between myself uh, and Callan and Sensei, I'm assuming you guys are here as controllers. Is that correct? I am. So I'm going to be flying the back seat with Stall here. Okay, all right, copy. So, uh, Sensei, between you and I, uh, we will run the Marshall stack and the approaches today. Uh, and so I'll go ahead and hash that out. Uh, so, Sensei, you can go ahead for button 17. Once uh, once we assign the approach frequencies, you will be responsible for button 17, and I will be responsible for button 15. Uh, and it'll all become clear once we get, uh, once we get aircraft in the stack and, and start pushing it. All right, so once we get all the aircraft in, uh, I don't know everybody's individual side numbers and things like that, uh, but once we get everybody checked in uh, on uh, when we initiate, I got, I'll get all the call, the uh, aircraft side numbers, and then essentially what we'll do is just rocket ripple from the lowest number up to the highest number, and that will be your expected position or your expected holding uh, number within the stack. Now, uh, if we get through the first couple of these, maybe what we'll do is we'll go and mix it up a little bit because it just throws a little bit of uh, a new look in it, you will, so that if we do two or three of these, you're not constantly marshalling at Mom's 21, Angel 6, you know, maybe you'll marshal Mom's 25, Angel's, um, Angel's 10 or something like that. Uh, but for the purposes of the first two or so, uh, we'll just kind of rock and ripple from the lowest to the highest number in the stack. Uh, and remember that uh, everything's going to be coming in singles only, no section recoveries. Already kind of talked about, uh, we'll do uh, several of these if we have time, and then we'll push on with that. All right, for button, our correction on slide four. So, like I said, and everybody should be well aware, case three recoveries today. Uh, today's going to be clear weather. Uh, again, it's just kind of ease everybody into this when we do this next week. At that point, it's going to be dark out, and you're going to really have to rely on your instruments at that point. Alright, for slide five, uh, so we'll go through some of the comm procedures, things that's going to be pushed out, and uh, you'll hear this numerous times today, so it almost become uh, parrot and uh, muscle memory at that point. So whenever you check in, we finally kick everything off, you'll check in your aircraft. Uh, you'll be checking in the singles today, we won't do any uh, section check-ins or anything like that, but for singles, uh, just go ahead and check in, provide your side number, uh, and then provide your position relative to mobs, tack in uh, your fuel state. Uh, which it should be pretty much the same fuel state of everybody. An example comm is going to be that Marshall 301 checking in, holding hands with 302. But for the purposes of today's, you're not going to be holding hands with anyone. So Marshall 301 checking in, marking moms 02550, angels 18, low state 0.2. Uh, and so now that allows me as a Marshall controller to start taking a look and make sure I've got a good radar contact on you and establish those communications. All right, so once we get that good hand up, that shake, handshake between <coughs> you as uh, as the incoming aircraft and uh, us as the incoming as the Marshall approach controllers, then what you're going to hear is you're going to hear the type of the case recovery, the type of approach, the expected final bearing, which I've already heard the comms going on. So BRC is 317, so you figure your uh, expected final bearing is going to be about 10 degrees to the left of that, so about 307. Altimeter should be 299 or 2. Is that correct, Hawaiian? Stay firm. Okay. Uh, and then we'll issue the holding instructions, your approach times button, your approach button, the time checks. Um, the latter two there, the vector to marshal and the multiple marshal stack information, we won't do any of that today. But an example com, once you check in uh, from marshal, B301, marshal, case three recovery, CB1 approach. Expected final bearing is uh, for today is going to be 307, altimeter 299 or 2. Marshall, Moms, 127, Angels, tw correction, uh, Mar Marshall, Moms, 127, 21, Angels, 6, expected approach time, 15, or 15, button 15, time check, 0805, 16, 17, 18. Uh, that way that will give us uh, the ability to make sure that we got good time syncs and everything uh, between you and, uh, and us as the Marshall approach controllers. All right, and then you're going to give the read back, Marshall 301, Marshalling Moms 225, 21, Angel 6, approach time 16, 
uh, button 15. And then uh, we'll go to the next aircraft there, and then the alter correction issue uh, the marshal instructions for the follow-on aircraft. All right, any questions on the comms that you can expect to hear today? Uh, are we going with uh, real time or kind of the in-game time for the ad? Uh, so go for uh, in-game time because that's the time that uh, that'll be synced up between you, the jet and the game. Gotcha. Um, can you restate time. which frequencies correspond to which buttons uh, one more time? Yeah, so if you don't have it up, uh, so button three. Uh, which that uh, controlling station is going to be departure. That frequency is 285 decimal 675. Button 16, that is controlling station Marshall. That frequency is 285 decimal zero. Button 15 is uh, one of your two approach frequencies so that call, uh, station call signs can be just approach approach alpha or approach bravo so button 15 is three six zero decimal zero two five and then button 17 which is going to be approach bravo frequency is two two eight decimal eight five zero All right, pressing on. Uh, slide six. So the marshal procedures. So like I said, the primary marshal, your marshal tack, you know, your marshal fix is going to be 100 degree, 100, 180 degrees relative to the expected final bearing. So as we said, your expected final bearing for today is going to be 307. Uh, so you're going to be marshaling on mom's 127 radio. Uh, your approach fix, um, that's, it's going to be, the way the verbiage reads is for each aircraft will be the distance of one mile for every 1,000 feet of altitude plus 15 miles. In no case will the base altitude be lower than 6,000 feet. Or essentially what that breaks down to is you start your initial approach fix, your first initial approach fix at MOMS 21 DME at Angel 6. So whoever has got the lowest side number aircraft today, that you can expect to be marshalling on MOMS 127 at 21 DME at Angel 6. For every aircraft that comes in after that, just add one to that. So if 301 is the first one down the chute, he's going to be on MOMS um, 127, or correct, yeah, 127, uh, he's going to be at 21 DME Angel 6. 302, which he will be the second one down the chute, he's going to be marshalling on the same attack in. So marshalling moms 127 at 22 DME and Angel 7. And then for each aircraft after that, like I said, you can add one to that. All right, the hardest part for today is going to be the holding pattern and, and actually hitting that initial approach fix at your expected approach time on your expected final bearing. Uh, so for today, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be doing a seven-minute holding pattern. Uh, so if you're looking at slide seven there, it's essentially going to be a 10 nautical mile leg um, off of the your expected or correction, your initial approach fix that has been assigned to you. Um, so the goal is whatever time has been given to you. So if your expected approach time is 0800, your goal is to hit that initial approach fix at that time inbound to mom uh, in prep, in, as you start to proceed uh, for your recovery procedures there. It's over to you as the pilots, you've got to adjust your airspeed as necessary within that holding pattern to get to that approach time. So to help make it easier, you fly your holding pattern at 300 knots because that way it's easy calculations at 300 knots, uh, it essentially takes uh, one minute to go five nautical miles. So if you're doing 10 nautical mile legs, you know that it's going to take two minutes to fly 10 nautical miles. And then once you get to the end of that 10 nautical miles, you're going to execute a standard angle bank turn, 30 degree angle bank turn to the left, 180 degrees, and you can fly that for 90 seconds. Now if you fly that, assuming no winds or anything else, uh, you should be able to fly a seven minute holding pack. Um, things you're going to have to take into account though, the ship is going to move, so your initial approach fix will also move, so you've got to take that into account as well. Now if you start getting behind or ahead of your timing on the initial approach fix, you're going to have to adjust your airspeed as necessary to correct for those timing deltas. 
Again, the overall goal is to hit that initial approach fix at your expected approach time as you start uh, your recovery to, uh, to mom. All right, as far as the overall pattern, uh, you're going to be flying. Uh, it's essentially a diagonal stack pattern that you've got. Uh, so once you start your approach, so like I said, you're holding, you're holding uh, at 300 knots, but when you start your approach, uh, you're going to decrease your airspeed down to 250 knots, and you're going to descend at 4,000 feet per minute until you hit 5,000 feet. At 5,000 feet, then you're going to shallow your descent rate down to 2,000 feet per minute. Um, <clears throat> And you're, you're going to get fly down to an altitude of Angels 1.2 or 1,200 feet. Uh, so once you get down to that altitude, it's going to be kind of a straight and level flight at that point, holding about 250 knots. Uh, key uh, timings or distances for you, for mom, um, <coughs> to take into account is at 8 nautical miles. Uh, you have the prerogative to dirty up if you don't, and this is where approach will come in and help out. Uh, 301, 8 miles, dirty up. So that's essentially the cue to go ahead and start taking your landing configuration. And then as you're passing through six miles, uh, you're going to decrease your speed down 150 knots. You're going to be in landing configuration, and now you're going to start to take your approach speed. So for the Hornets, it's going to be between about 120 to 130 knots. For the air, other aircraft, I'm not as familiar with those, but you're going to adjust to that landing configuration, or you should be in that landing configuration, but you're going to slow to your final approach speeds. And at three nautical miles, you're going to begin your descent. You're going to start intercepting your ICLS, need, your ICLS, and then you're going to fly the needles down to uh, down to the ball, down to the ball. And so, at about three quarter nautical miles, that's when you have your approach come up and say 301, three quarter, uh, three quarter mile, call the ball. All right. If you get down the deck, uh, so things that we're that we need to hear from you is we need to know either if you have bolted, uh, if you've trapped, or if there's going to be a wave off or anything like that. Uh, once you trap, just call trap, 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 and then go ahead and get your wings folded, and then uh, taxi out of the landing area because we need to make sure that we've got the green deck. Uh, but for the purpose of this one, uh, this, just for the first two, uh, let's just, we'll just say for the first two approaches, go ahead and go hook up. That way we just uh, don't get anything clobbered up adjusted on the deck there. Uh, so go ahead and do those, and you're essentially going to do a touch and go. We'll bounce back off the deck, and then at that point we'll go ahead and clear you to fly up to the north there. Um, but if you go down in, uh, during an evolution where we are going to do a trap, uh, and if you bolter or you wave off your missed approach procedures, you're actually going to you're going to fly. You're going to maintain your heading, your expected final bearing heading. You can climb up to Angels 1.2. And then um, once you get to a point of about four miles or two minutes ahead of the ship, then you're going to go ahead and execute your left-hand turn, 180 degrees, the reciprocal of your expected final bearing, uh, and you're going to flow back down. And then at that point, the approach controllers will take control of you and start to hook you back into the pattern. All right, so the last slide here, uh, page 10 is uh, we'll go through some example comm flows kind of from the beginning uh, all the way to the end so everything is perfect uh, so departure 301 to airborne uh, for the purpose of this one you will already start out airborne uh, but if we do the points where you trap and then you go and take off again you're going to switch up to departure and let them know that you're airborne all right once we get everybody checked in uh, we'll put out the 99 call 99 all aircraft cleared to marshal then that's your queue uh, marshal 301 checking in marking mom 025 50 angels 18 low state 4.2 301 this is where no marshal will come in 301 marshal case 3 recovery cb1 approach expected final bearing is 045 altimeter 2902 marshal moms 225 21 angel 6 expected approach time 16 button 15. Now you, uh, you read that back to make sure that we uh, are, are in sync with each other. Marshall 301, Marshall Moms 225, 21, Angel 6, approach time 15, approach button 15. And then Marshall will go on to the next area. Uh, periodically throughout the event, uh, Marshall will put out the time check. 99 time check is 08, 15, 30, 31, 32, 33. Uh, and we'll count that down with the seconds so that makes sure everybody's got the same time on the jet. Uh, it may be a little bit harder for me today, uh, so since uh, I may have to have you do that, reason being, like I said, I'm, uh, I'm not in DCS because I'm having problems and issues with it, and I don't have a time check on my lot ATC, um, uh, so I may have you do this. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in the same boat. I also don't have DCS running. 
Okay. All right. Copy that. All right. Well, then we'll kind of uh, we'll we'll work through that. But just for the purpose of the day, we'll just uh, we'll just we'll, we'll work through that. All right. Uh, and then once you get into your holding pattern, uh, really, like I said, it's up to you. You're going to find that it may get a little bit boring, especially depending. You may get up there and hold for five minutes. You may hold for ten minutes. Uh, I'll try to adjust the times as necessary, so that we're not spending. In, uh, an extraneous amount of time of people just up there marshalling, but yet I don't want to give you time up there and you've only got two minutes to go as well. Um, so we may have to adjust some of this timing to help out a little bit. But uh, once you get all that information, it's your job to get to the right position in the airspace and the position behind mom and establish those holding points there. And then uh, essentially it's just over to you at that point. Uh, then as at the expected approach time, uh, then you as aircraft are going to come up Marshal 301 commencing and at that point, that's going to be your cue. Marshall will switch you over to your assigned approach frequency, whether that's going to be button 15 or 16. Uh, and you just check in, approach 301's checking in. And that's just nothing more than just, all right, 301, got you out of there. And that's just kind of a handshake between the two. Now, assuming everything goes well, you're flying the jet perfectly, it should not be many comms at all because it's flying an instrument approach, so it's over to you. So you fly your approach. Uh, and then at, DME, at 8 DME, uh, Marshall's got a correction approach is going to come up, 301, dirty up. At 6 DME, 301, take approach speed. At 3 DME, 301, intercept needles. And then three quarter mile, 301, three quarter mile, call the ball. And then you're going to respond, 301, horn of ball, 5.2, or whatever platform you're flying in. So uh, 301, uh, Tomcat ball, um, you know, 3.8. Whatever whatever uh, platform you're in, that's what you're going to you check in. Uh, and like I said, with the uh, touch and goes, uh, call airborne, call bulletproof, or call trap. So the first couple of evolutions, you'll just make the airborne call. And then at that point, just go ahead and flow back up to the north, 360 or away from mom to get out of the position. Uh, and then once we finish with our recovery, uh, then we'll go ahead and start the process all over again and get everybody kind of back in the Marshall stack again. All right, any questions? Hey, Fa, you have the access to the mission time just to the right of the true and imperial switch in lot ATC. Ah, yeah, if you click on it, you can get the seconds also. Yeah, copy. All right, cool. The downside... It updates, yeah. Yeah, the only downside, it looks like it only updates when you click it. Uh, oh, yeah, it does a 10-second refresh because that's the refresh rate of the radar scope. Copy. We won't be able to use that for the second hand. It'll be up to 10 seconds off. Right. Um, well, in that case, kind of what we'll do is, you know, I'll sit there and watch it when it clicks. So, like, it just clicks. So, time is 12, 51, 42. And when I see it click, then I'll just kind of 42. 43, 44, 45. So if I'm off by a second or two, just kind of go. All right, any questions up to this point? All right, if not, so Hawaiian, I'll go ahead and turn it over. All right, so most of the show, at least initially, is going to be as far uh, spoke about and you're going to be essentially interacting only with humans assuming everyone gets all the basics and it seems kind of boring we'll do another run where you are not only interfacing with the humans but you'll have the script going on in the background so you learn how to do this without the humans around so you can practice on your own with the script uh, the first run uh, some of you here were on early you probably saw me smoke the zones so I'll smoke the zones for the first run <clears throat> Depending on how people do on the second run, the zones may or may not be smoked. And I'll be in the air, in the approach zone, to keep tabs on the next guy who's about to commence to make sure you're in the right position. Any questions for me? Alright, I'll just make sure I'm looking here. So, I sh we should expect three aircraft this morning. So, I've got Stahl and Cowling. I've got uh, Osupic, and then I've got you Hawaiian. Is that correct? Just make sure I've got the right numbers. So if you look at the uh, TID see, repeater, you can see the ground speed uh, from the top left. And really only two people are under training. Okay. 
Um, so Hawaiian, are you actually doing the approach? So if you are, uh, I'll need to know where to put you at this time. Negative. I'm just going to be flying on the side of, if someone needs me. Otherwise, I won't be nice. here. Okay. All right. Then for the purposes of today, then Sensei, we've only got two aircraft. We'll make it easy. I could flip this fucking thing up to talk to me. So it'll be It'll be fine once we're not doing Discord. Yeah. I'm having a bit of trouble getting the ident working up on the uh, F-14 here. One, one, Are you on the deck or airborne? I'm airborne. Um, Let's see, uh, be uh, Mother's 340 at 11, and Angel's 230, or 23. Right Say again your position for a mile. Uh, I'd be, right now it's coming up on 350, uh, 11, and Angel's 23. All right, copy, and you're flowing east. Affirmative. Copy. What is your, uh, number? Uh, 102. 102. The guy in the back is not being cooperative with changing the transponder around. All right, um, there's not any other questions. Uh, we can probably just go ahead and kick it off. It looks like our side number is 101 for this. Uh, and then Sensei, between you and I, um, we'll go ahead and just use the intercom channel uh, zero there on SRS. I think our side number is uh, 323 from the transponder. Uh. All right, you guys ready? Ready. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna mute the uh, mic here, and then uh, we'll establish comms on button three. Button three. 102 up on button 3. 102 is departure, I got your log clear button 3. 323 on button 3. 323, it's uh, departure, I got your log clear. This is just that hot mic is weird. Yeah. I can, I can turn it off. Uh, yeah, it's not a big deal. Um, are you gonna do any, are you gonna do the comms or shall I? Ninety nine departure. All aircraft uh, are checked in. Uh, roll call and check in. Uh, when? Uh, uh, I'd say if you can handle most of the least initially, just to kind of decrease the workload. Yep. All right. So once we're in uh, fifty, I'll check in with Marshall. So currently we're 
Saying something here? Something here. Okay, that's perfect. There we go. Alright, so we don't have working uh, preset channels here, so I have to do it manually. That sucks. Yeah, it gives me something to do. Keep on this frequency until we actually commence, yeah? Sounds good. Alright. Yep. They didn't actually give us a, a holding out if you didn't 
Uh, no, they did. So holding altitude is Angel Seven. And approach time is 16, so... That divide, Marshal. Time check is 13.03.41.42.43. Yeah, expect approach time is uh, 16 for us, so we've got about 14, no, 12 minutes. that home plate on the TIG should be a carrier. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, we'll find out. Yeah, I've got the, uh, the HSI right now. Yeah. Well, it's there if you need it. Thank you. Also, it doesn't give this. You want a nice uh, shoulder rub as well? Please. Uh, maybe I'll salvo some flares? <laughs> All the flares. Consider an alarm clock. Do we have any drop tanks on here? I can jettison those. I mean, we can just make the noises of our mouths. Splash! Can see if I can't lock up Ossipic. Actually, I can I can get him on the TCS. I guess it doesn't matter so much. I, I do think you approach from behind, so I'm gonna just do that and shoot for around 35. Yeah, something to ask, I guess, after we're done here. Yeah. Well, they're not yelling at us, so... There's that. Alright, we've got another eight minutes. Mm. 
99 Marshall time check 1308. Correction, Marshall time check is now 1308, 39, 40, 41, 42. All Lion shadowing, uh, also pick over there. I believe so. Let's see. Yeah. yeah they're getting in, uh, yeah, a little bit far off of the TCS. Maybe I should have ordered it a lot closer to the area. I was trying to respect where they put us. I'm gonna leave uh, the the radio frequency up here to two eight five six seven five. Let me know if you want me to change it or make life easier. Uh, no, I probably should have said that. That's kind of what I was expecting. So you keep it on that. I'll handle radio shenanigans. Up and there's the fucking box. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty cool. Lots of smoke. Yeah, you might have to get on the, um, I guess, inbound leg. Alright, so I'll, ju I'll just slow us up here. As soon as she's coming 
that, uh, 21 nautical miles. So if I just take this extra slow, we should be okay. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Alright, ground speed's 400. Three seven five. Ninety nine Marshall time check is thirteen fourteen mark one oh two zero three. So I've actually brought up the um, that GPS model because it has a clock. So we've got about 90 seconds. I don't like how close they are. Yeah, uh... Oh wait, they're, they're still 31 the away. Yeah, so they're gonna take that. Yeah, we're dropping below 7,000. seconds. Now, the question is if he uh, started on time or not. Somebody else's problem, isn't it? Yeah, they'll, they'll tell us. In worst of the case, we just wave off. Alright, how's this speed? Yep, looks good. Uh, So, actually, we're, uh, 520. Yeah, that's on really fast. Yep, yeah, so we'll need to be three, fast. 323, Marshall. 323. 323, Marshall, you commence approach. Are we commencing? Yeah, we can commence. 323, commencing. 323, uh, Marshall, we're switch, uh, button 17, approach Bravo. Alright, let's walk in that over. Since we have 5,000, I'm gonna go on. Alright, we should be on button 17 here. Ground speed is three zero. Yep. is looking at us. DME is 12. We are 
currently at 180. Dometer back here. If it helps, but uh, the camera is on camera. Sure did, uh, which we should be at. Four DME. So I think you handle that. Yeah. And you're able to use my radio, yeah? Yeah. Good. We're at 1.5. Angels 
102, departure, got your load, clear, radar, contact. Uh, maintain flow 360, clear to climb agency. Yeah, Angels 15, and that was uh, 320 for um, 102? Well, 360. 360, Angels 15 for 102. One, zero. That would have been a nice one. Your boss says our pass is invalid. Now, do we call something at this point? Uh, three two three airborne. Three two three, copy. Three contact departure. Yeah, no, it, it's 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 definitely an experience just sitting back here and trying to like handle all this and write everything down. But that was a good fucking win ending. <laughs> Damn right it was. I was looking over your shoulder and it's like, oh, that that's a nice that's a nice descent. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little ugly in the middle, <laughs> but it, it I swear it's like the training wheels actually make it worse because I've been practicing this shit at night. Oh yeah. I lost sight of Rossi. I, I don't know if that uh, I mean, I can lock him up for you. Oh, wait, I think I see him. Is he off to our uh, one o'clock? Yeah, that'll be him. Saw you up on channel? Yep. Alright, I'm back up on it. What, uh, what channel's the ILS on, Stennis? Is it, it's channel 1, right? Channel 1, too. That's what the briefing says. Ooh, you just told me to read the manual. I wasn't going to call him out, but yeah. <laughs> but you, you never know, it might change. Two and, uh, three, two, three. Go ahead and anchor and press the pause right now. Alright, tell him right. I, I don't see what's going on. He's just trying to hold me down. Three, two, three, anchoring. Does that. Do we continue climbing? I would say. Yeah, so just based on position. So the map editor only allows me to set the ICLS, which is for the F-18. I don't know what it gets sent to for the F-14. Uh, Archer's working on that channel Yeah, I thought it was cool it, it, in a weird way, like the the uh, smoke kind of like distracted me. Like, it was hard to see the boat, um, but I felt like the uh, it was a little ugly during the middle, but we cleaned it up at the end. Okay, uh, one o two. Um, yeah, I mean the smoke 
video is a little interesting. You can tell who's cheating and who's not by who's following the smoke versus the actual needles. Right, right. Um, okay, so a couple of things uh, off your I'll right. point out. So, it kind of goes back to the comps. Uh, so, when you commit your approach, go ahead and you've got to let Marshall uh, and approach know that you commit your approach. Uh, because, again, it all goes back to the time of these. Um, so, Marshall and approach need to know that you commit your approach at the applicable time. Uh, and if you haven't, then, uh, then approach has got to make adjustments as necessary. Uh, also, the important thing, so for 323, um, what airspeed are you guys flying when you're coming down the street? Um, so we were trying to bleed off some of the speed we felt like we needed to make the, uh, the push time. So, you know, it's supposed to be 250, but we were definitely running a little hot. And then, uh, when approach asked us to slow, we were, we were able to, to get, uh, get it under 200. Okay. And so we can definitely tell, uh, because, so the timing and the airspeed and all that stuff is, is kind of set get a one minute recovery for aircraft, so uh, real world, you're expecting about every minute, you're expecting a, uh, an aircraft to hit the deck of the carrier. Uh, but as we're watching it there, we can definitely tell you're approaching up on the rear end there of 102, uh, within, so you got, had gotten within about a 30 second gap here, so that's why we slowed you down. Um, so that's why it's extremely important to make sure that you're flying those airspeeds to keep everything flowing appropriately. Um, it's not that bad with only two of you guys flying today. But you can imagine, uh, as, as you've got somebody in trail of uh, three to three, then you get further away from them, now you got to start adjusting the speed. So one, one issue that you have in the stack just has a ripple effect throughout the rest of the stack. So that's why it's extremely important to fly those years. Uh, question on that note then, uh, did we uh, kind of identified that we were going to have an issue with uh, even hitting that push down, so we didn't really enter the stack, we kind of entered it and immediately, uh, you know, basically, you guys were asking us if we commenced and we were probably about 0.2 miles away from the, the fixed point. When we identify a problem like that, should we communicate it to you so we can adjust the push time or, uh, you know, kind of just make a reasonable effort to, to get there even if they're going to come in a little hot, which, I, as it's coming out, I don't think they have a bad idea, so. Yep, absolutely. Um, so, absolutely, meaning you identify that problem early, but yeah, let Marshall let approach know because if you get that, that if you identify it early enough, then they can make adjustments throughout the rest of the stack to compensate for that. Um, and if, it, if you're not going to be able to make it, they can always pull you out of the stack and re marshal you somewhere else. Uh, they can always do a manual push, meaning so if you call up and say, hey, we're not going to make this time, and then it may be like, okay, hey, stand by for manual push, which basically means approach is going to tell you when to push at that point. So if you identify that problem early, absolutely let Marshall let approach those so that they can make the adjustments as necessary. Okay, uh, two other quick questions, or at least I hope. Um, when we were kind of sorting through that problem, uh, I realized that I did not know, like I know how to enter the, the stack on a case one, but for a case three, I didn't really see anything uh, that I recalled, but something was saying we're supposed to approach from behind. Um, is, is that true? And can we enter the, the stack from any sort of angle, or does it need to be behind and also? Um, so you can enter, kind of, you can enter in from any position because you figure, real world, you're going to have aircraft coming in from multiple directions. Um, the one thing that you do want to adhere to, though, is you do want to maintain your standoff with the carrier itself, you know, probably by about five to ten nautical miles. Reason being is because, so like right now, uh, you've got an ARCO overhead tanker that's overhead mom at 6,000 feet. So if your marshal instructions are to marshal at Angel 6, uh, you don't want to go blowing overhead the carrier there because you are now co to with other, a other assets. And so that's a great question because, uh, you know, I noticed there when you were, you know, after you got your marshal instructions, you flew way to the south and you always kind of like to make this huge right dog or left dog leg there uh, by going kind of directly to the point there for the marshal. But yeah, you don't have to come in directly behind the carrier, uh, but I would say you don't want to do it the way you did it for way down to the south and then make it the left hand turn and come in. And I think that was the idiot. that that's what caused you to be driven behind the first Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and that's you, you nailed it. That's exactly why I did that too. So 
Uh, next time won't happen. Other quick question for the F-14. I got a little stopwatch up here. Does not have a second hand. Is it cool to ask you guys that when you do the time sync, if you were to do it on a minute so I can get my uh, start on this chronograph, that's about the only way I get a second hand? Yep, absolutely. So yeah, you could, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good point. You can always do your time check. For example, so uh, time check will be one three three four zero 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 one zero two. Now the other way that you can also do the time check is uh, you can kind of do it in reverse. Um, you know, meaning uh, time check in five seconds will be time one three three two, three five four three two one time check one three three five. So you can also do it backwards that way. Does that make sense? Um, it, it could, could be, be that, that my brain's still foggy, foggy, but no. no. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. sorry uh, uh, keep so, meaning, so, you know, we've been doing, okay, time check is time 1334, or 1, or 2, or 3. So when you do it that way, that does not give you much of a heads up of what you're talking about, of syncing your, your stopwatch up there with the minute that's like, well, crap, I just missed the, 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 the straight up zero, uh, you know, time one, three, three, five. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that was a problem I was having. I think, like, when, when you guys did that, I was kind of just doing the one Mississippi, two Mississippi, try to get it close. Um, I just didn't I figure there had to have been a better way. Right. And so what I'm saying is you can kind of, uh, instead of giving you the current time and then counting the time up, so to help you out, we could say time and in 10 seconds will be time 1336. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then that way, then you can sync up at that, at that end of time. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. sorry, that makes that sense. sense. So he's counting on the wind. Say again? Sorry, so he's counting down to when you're hacking your clock. Right, yep, yep. Absolutely, yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's a countdown so you can know when that had your time safe. Got it. The final countdown. <laughs> yes. Um, alright, so 102 or 323. Uh, any other questions or anything on that on that approach? Um, no, other than it's just um, it's difficult in the F-14 to go direct to the holding fix because of the uh, nav equipment. Hmm. This kind of real. Yeah. All right, Hawaiian, you got anything? Exactly. I'm basically cheating. Sensei. Negative. I like that we have a control. Oh, I guess sensei. I do have one thing. Um, <laughs> I need to be prompted to say that we're airborne. Just tell everyone what the status is when you touch the deck. Did you trap? Did you go airborne? Whatever. Sorry about that. I was having trouble getting my mic to click. Um, yeah, actually, real quick, too, on that note, uh, when you called Needles, um, weren't really sure what to say. Did we just say that we've been intercepted, or they're good, or what's the proper response to that? Uh, all you need to do is just respond back to your side number. Got it. And so, you know, that's a lot of the comps throughout the approach stack there, is all you have to do is just really spot back to real one. Uh, you know, 102, 323. Uh, reason being is because you do not need to spend a lot of time trying to think about what you talk about on the radio, but you just need to let the approach know that you've heard and acknowledged. So really the only time that you should be making a call, uh, a, a lengthy call will be at three quarter mile top ball. 102, uh, Tomcat ball, uh, 550. And then that is really the longest transmission that you should make, uh, as you're doing. Understood. Uh, Sensei, did you have any questions? Uh, those call-outs for the uh, three-quarter mile, those are still going to be on uh, the Alpha and Bravo approaches? They will be, yep. Uh, okay. And then, I know we're not doing it here, but if we ever get to the point where you have LSOs and you can do that scripting or whatever, um, when uh, approach puts that call-out, uh, you know, one zero two three-quarter mile call ball, um, and then you respond with the appropriate ball call. Uh, that is 
that is uh, indications of what that approach, even approach Alpha and approach Bravo, they do not talk anymore on the radio. At that point, it then gets kicked over to the LSO, and they have comms priority because now they've got to talk that aircraft down to the deck. So that's why it's extremely important to get that, that track, track, track call, uh, or to get that airborne call, or to get that bulker call. Reason being is because as soon as you make that call, that lets approach know, okay, now I can come back up and start talking on the radio. Copy. All right, uh, so if you guys are ready, uh, we'll go ahead and do uh, a second wave of this. And uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll just do another hookup pass. Uh, so just to execute another uh, touch and go there. Uh, so if you guys are ready, then we'll go ahead and kick it off again. Okay, so hook up again. Hey, fine, hook up for this pass again. I was like, hook up, like we hook up to the carrier? Cool, no problem. <laughs> Uh, let me know if 
Alright, will do. Now that tanker is about 18. Yeah, 18 away. What's the. What's the. Rock? That again. Or just roughly. Uh, uh, roughly two three zero. Okay. Okay. Oh, so, so are we in danger of hitting it? Or? Uh, I don't think so. I'll I'll keep you apprised. Uh, I'll, I'll maybe stay at a thousand until. Just keep an eye on it. Alright, we'll do. Uh, do you want me to tell you when it's going to be minute one, four, five? Yeah. It's going to be 45 in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. Nice. Teamwork. Yes. Oh, Hawaiian's watching us. We're pretty well clear of that tanker. Okay. One zero two, Marshall, Blue one eight zero. One zero two, Sigurd. Uh, one zero two, Marshall, Blue one eight zero. One eight zero. So we're looking at about eight more minutes. This is why I speed. I don't know if I'm in trouble with speeding in a fucking fighter jet. Here we are. Hopefully, this feels like a good offset. I hope that's, that's true. true. We'll call it the down the leg of our race track pattern. That's true. We do all the creature comforts that we didn't do last time, except I heard it. We're still really fast, so hopefully it's okay. Well, we're not in the holding pattern, right? No. Or are we? We're, we're gonna be here in about two miles. Okay. And I'll slow down. I try to slow down in the bucket. Yeah, put on the brakes and let one fly right by. Okay, so now let's say we're on the downwind. That's better. Get to 300 
Oops, yep, one flew right by. Zero. There you go. Three two zero. Uh, and let me know if you need me to time anything. I'm going to turn around the 35 miles from mom, do some quick math. Tell me if that sounds like a good idea. Should it be 31? Yeah, well, too late now. Wait, what? You want me to turn 31? No, I'm just second guessing math. Oh, okay. Hold at Angel 6. Expected Charlie time 1355 hours. Altimeter 2. That's 35 there. Report 30 degrees. And we are looking at doing our uh, commence in four minutes and ten seconds. So we want to, like, do we want to be commencing at the 21 mile mark? I'm not sure if it's 21 or 19, to be honest with you. It looks like it's 19 on this. But then that, he's got that red box there, so it must mean something, right? <laughs> it's hard to know.
99 time check. The time will be 1353.35 in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 35, 36, 37. And if you need the time, just ask. Yeah, I think I just swapped that out for That's alright. I don't know if you mean it. I'm gonna level us out, and then basically we're, we're good. 102 Marshall, you are one. Yeah, we are. 102. And uh, 102 Ooh. Marshall, disregard that that call was. I was about to check. Okay, I was showing a 56 push time. That is a from, I looked at my list wrong. Uh, so, 323, three, uh, you are approximately 30 seconds from your push time. 323. 30 seconds. You should be around about some time. time. Yeah, I think we I think we've done this one nicely. Three six zero zero two five. Speed is 260 and dropping. 250. Red 11 DME. Three thousand. Twelve thousand. Or twelve hundred, rather. Uh, save that for a moment. Is that eight miles, you scrub? Hawaiian's watching. It's nine miles. I think it's actually it's ten according to the chart. I think they're okay. I'm more concerned with. Of course, but... Yeah, we are a little. Yeah. 
hookup has. Uh, let's just confirm that. 323, hookup. We're at six. One four zero indicated. So I think we're not supposed to be down this low until three. That's probably right. Uh, just having trouble getting on speed. No worries. Doing a subtle climb without losing the on speed. I wouldn't worry too much about it. We're supposed to descend in about one mile. Okay. Just expect to uh, <laughs> have somebody mention something. Sure. Well, I mean, like, they're going under feet, right? Uh, so I think it's, we're at uh, 1,200 until 3. Oh, I thought it was 800. Yeah, no worries. Well, we need to be at 800 at some point anyway. 323, 3 miles, intercept needle. 323. Airspeed looks good. Look up, DLC, flaps here. Alright, holy shit. shit. I'm so, so scared, scared my joystick's gonna go off and I'm not gonna, gonna notice. notice. And, and we're gonna look really stupid. Really stupid. We can't let Ospic show us up. Never. Never. We can we do can any refueling he cannot. That's right. We still got that back before. 323, approximately three quarter miles, call the ball. Go ahead. Alright, I gotcha. Uh, 323, uh, Tomcat ball, 128. Yeah, I don't think you want me to call the ball. I, I almost did, and then, like, it, 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 it Caused me to drop because I hit the DLC button instead of the transmit. Uh, this is looking good too. Hold on. Yeah. Up up we do this. Yeah.
but I, um, I'm curious about how this week is going to go, because I feel like, at the university, somebody's not going to, like, quarantine themselves, and we're going to have some <laughs> kind of meltdown. <laughs> yeah. You're probably right. Because that actually already happened over in, uh, Tasmania. The student decided not to quarantine themselves, went to university, and, uh, Departure one zero two with you on the Volver. Uh, one zero two departure. I got you loud, clear radar contact. Uh, one zero two uh, flow two seven zero angel uh, seventeen. One zero two two seven zero angel seventeen. Didn't really seem like it was a problem as I corrected. Um, did want to ask though if that's something uh, you should mention. I'm sure you guys saw it. And, um, you know, it seems pretty subtle, but also seems correctable by the end. Um, yeah, if it's not if it's not that far out, it's not going to cause a big issue. Um, that was fine on that one. But if it's going to be way off, definitely let uh, Marshall uh, know that. Uh, but yeah, kind of noticed that. Uh, not a big deal, but. It And you told me to flow to 180 as I was approaching the stack, um, just because I was getting a little tight to the carrier, is that right? Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, because if you to maintain your current and your uh, that heading that you're flowing on, uh, you would have gotten a little too close to the carrier, and also ARCO was uh, right in that same vicinity, so that's why I adjusted your flow to 180. And another stupid question, what does exactly the flow imply uh, ATC-wise? Essentially, that means you need to fly that direction. So, for 270, uh, you need to start flying for Sometimes you just say shit because it sounds good. Okay, so that'd be equivalent to just like a vector and civilian work. Um, but then, is there a certain point where you're going to resume your own nav to enter the Marshall stack or is you wait for a clearance? Um, so yeah, good call. Great question. Um, so, yeah, once you flow 180, um, so. Um, there, there should come a point, absolutely, that approach should call back and said, hey, okay, uh, intercept, uh, you know, uh, the, the stack as necessary. Um, but if there comes a point when it's like, hey, I haven't heard anything from Marshall there, what am I clear to do? Uh, because, yeah, in the civilian world, and I mean, even, uh, even in the, the, the military world, uh, last thing you told me to do was fly this direction, and I'm going to fly this direction, and I'm so that's actually a great point. Uh, so you should have gotten okay for some long course or something like that to let you know that you're cleared and uh, to intercept the marshal. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if there was something, you know, so, some subtle difference between a flow and a vector, you know, military versus civil. No, flow and vector are pretty much the same thing. And uh, as a process of recruiting, go ahead and anchor your present on it. Did you say anchor? Sure did. And uh, 102, you can also anchor your present on one zero two. Three, three, three. Um, yep, so that's why I gave you the one eight zero. Uh so great question. So yes, Marshall should have said, okay, you're uh clear to resume on course. Um and if there's ever a cloud, go ahead and call back up and say, Hey, pay attention. Oh yeah, 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 okay, you're clear to uh intercept uh Marshall radio there. Uh what other questions? I think we're really bad, I mean, uh, No. Okay. Um, so from my perspective, actually, that uh, looked a lot better on, uh, on the flow there. Uh, for 102, uh, now, as best as I can tell, I think you were a little late on your push there. Uh, so your time, your push time was 5-6. Um, okay. Either you pushed on time, but got the comps out a little late, or if, it, if you actually were pushing, <laughs> the comps came out a little 
a little bit late there on your push time. Uh, however, though, it did work out. The uh, reason being is because, like I said, you want to maintain about a good one minute separation between each uh, sequential flow of the aircraft and the stack there. So as you come down the pipe there, uh, got the, the bearing lines there and the ranges. So you maintain about a good one minute separation here between uh, 323 and 102. So that's what you want to shoot for. Uh, and that's also what approach wants to shoot for is you're constantly watching for that range separation there and adjusting airspeed as necessary to maintain that good one minute separation. Uh, so other tools in the bag that the approach can use, uh, you can either slow down or speed up the airspeed. You saw that on the previous flow or you can dirty up the aircraft late, uh, early. So, you know, we put that call at DC on me to dirty up. Um, that's just the, that's the last point. You can always get dirtied up earlier, but once you get dirty up, your airspeed's gonna slow down. So there's different things that you can there that approach can use to maintain that good one in separation. But overall, that one looked really well, um, except for maybe the little bit of late push time there from one to two. Yeah, yeah, take that also. My mic is being, or my mic key is being a little bit fiddly. Um, is it okay uh, to cut the hold short distance-wise to uh, make up your time? Uh, to cut short what? I'm sorry. Instead of doing the ten, the full ten nautical miles, is it okay to cut, uh, you know, turn in early on the hold to make your time up? So absolutely. Um, so you know, if you're getting up there, you know, and you're on your holding altitude. You know, if you're up there for 10, 15 minutes, you know, try to fly the racetrack center as best as possible. Uh, but what you're seeing goes into exactly what you're asking there. Uh, once, once it gets down to where you've got to meet that initial that you're time, you can absolutely yeah. cut that yeah. short. Uh, and trust me, you have to doing a lot of uh, split S's. Uh, you know, you're in the aircraft, you start doing a series I'm of S-turns, you start uh, uh, getting time up there to meet that approach time. So absolutely. <laughs> Cut the holding pattern short, yeah, weaving pattern, things you know like what? that, to make sure you this get is that point time. right. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I've been tempted to like launch a flare or and something. Stall, your um, your ILS is working just fine, right? Yes. What channel do you have it on? Eleven. It's kind of in a weird spot. It's uh, I'm sorry, twelve. So yeah, just make sure the needle's in between the eleven and the thirteen. It's, it's, it's kind of hard, hard to see. see. I wonder if you're like, hey man, remember how you used to try to make fun of bottle? Uh, right? Any other questions or any uh, from uh, 102 or 33 uh, for that last pass? Okay, Sensei, you got any questions, comments, or feedback on, on how that evolution went? Nope, that one went really smooth. Uh, both aircraft uh, got into the stack and maintained their altitudes within 50 feet. Looked really good. Damn right. And right. Uh, no other comments. I do have one other comment that I just thought about. Uh, so for 102 there, uh, so when you got into the pattern there and you're holding altitude, um, you switched yourself over to button 17. Uh, don't do that. So maintain comp. That's why I put you back to the marshal on button 16 because you push you switch over to approach uh, when you start your approach. Okay. Reason being is because, you know, I'm time checks and all that stuff, any updated push times are all going to come out on, on the start of the button. You can descend to so the only time the when you switch over to your so approach frequency is when you're commencing the approach. Okay. Understood. Well done. Uh, Hawaiian, you got anything? That's why you're, you're the pilot. I mean, dude, I would have listened to you. Alright, so you guys, you guys want to do another evolution? Yes, please. Sorry. Alright, copy. So, <laughs> uh, you know, we still got some time, so if you guys want, we'll go ahead and do another book up pass. Uh, uh, and then after that, uh, then maybe we'll uh, do a hook down pass and start doing the traps and get back up on the, on the, the cats and things like that. Uh, so for this one, we'll just go ahead and do another hook up pass for a uh, touch and You guys want to interface with the script this way? No. <laughs> uh, I'm, I mean, if you want, yeah. Alright, All right, before we get you, started, let's just cage your mind to that script. So you need to bring up your comms menu and go to F10. And then there's probably an F4 up called 
I should be able to, and I've, I've used it before. There's only one option under that, the stenoscope. And so here is where you're going to do things like request marshal, and then the script is going to give you a push time and account for you and all that. You can request an emergency landing, the spinnings for case one. Uh, if you dorked it all up, you can reset your status. If you press F1 to go into help, you can change certain things. That's where I'm marking zone, then F1. You can change your skill level, which essentially uh, tightens up the tolerances for great. There's an attitude monitor, which gives you a whole bunch of uh, information about how far you are from the boat, what your vertical velocity is, blah, 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 if you want to do those kinds of things. Uh, the radio check for LSO and radio check for Marshall allows you to check that you have radio, the appropriate radio frequency for um, the script. And in the F-18, F-18 at least, I think it also sets the radio channel to the appropriate thing, so you can uh, toggle it. And I think my status, once you get into the case 3 assignments, you can query that to see, are you number one, number two to land, what's your assigned altitude, all those things. But it should periodically prompt you in the upper room. So, for what we are doing today, uh, it's probably good to request Marshall and then ignore what it tells you to because you're listening to a human for what your push time is. I think the script will be lenient where if you enter the platform area and start your commence at a strange time, I think it will still accept it, but we'll find it. Um, assuming it accepts it, it'll give you the same radio calls more or less the humans are giving you, telling you at a certain point to dirty up, telling you at a certain point to intercept needles. Obviously, you don't reply to the script, but it will reply to you as if you replied with the appropriate And all of it's done with voice acting, so you'll get audio back and the subtitles if you have those on, and they're on by default. Questions on the basics of the script? Boo. Yeah. <laughs> Your uh, voice acting. That was not nice. Uh, it's not mine, it's done by the guys who make. <laughs> what happened to his uh, nose down? Oh, no, why am I So, uh, the thing that kicks off the procedure for case 3 is when you request Marshall and you have to be in the carrier controlled area, the CCA. I think it's set for like 50 nautical miles or something, but if. After the humans here give you your vectors and you're just kind of flowing in, uh, just give that script a request marshal if you want, and um, we'll see what happens. Alright, that's it for me. Okay, got it. So 99, this is departure, all players are checked in. Clear switch, uh, marshal. Or, uh, Marshall Street. All right, you ready? Yep. Three four zero. One zero two Marshall. Marshall uh, three two three marking moms three four zero. Uh, fifteen angels fifteen. Uh, low state four point eight. Three two three is Marshall. Got you loud and clear. Radar contact. Three zero three Marshall. This will be a K three recovery. CV one approach. Expected final bearing is. 307, altimeter 2992. 323, Marshall on the mobs 127, 22, Angel 7. Expected approach time 26, button 17. 323, Marshall Lane 127, 22, Angel 7. Expected time 26, button 17. 323, Marshall, read back correct. Marshall 102 is uh, Mother's uh, 235 at uh, 16, Angel 17, Angel State 4.8.
have to start turning. Go go to you. Again, which is the it's the relatively nice one. Less buttons. Mesh. Quick time check. How many minutes? Uh, we have about 80 seconds. Should be hearing us go in here soon. One zero two commencing. Nice. One zero two Marshall, uh, cleared switch uh, first left. One zero two button fifteen. Forty seconds. 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 I feel like I can do a better job helping you with the timing. Alright, commencing. Uh, Marshall 323 three, commencing. Marshall 323, copy, clear switch approach button 17. Argo 1.
Do we have to say anything? No. Alright. They see us, obviously. <laughs> Ground speed is 130 and dropping. You can have dirty approach, dirty up, hook up approach, execute CD1 approach. Okay, that's nice that they tell us. Yeah. No problem. Team work, right? It's energy. We've actually got the, the uh, vertical needle line, which is fucking rare at this distance. <laughs> We're holding at 1,500. Ooh, good call. Speed's 140. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you told me that. Like, right now, I'm like just trying to get this fucking uh, E bracket under control. Yep. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. 12, it, it's, uh, the approach plate says 600 to 1200. So yeah, definitely. Call me out if I'm too high. Six point five. Thank you, three, take approach speed. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I just can confirm that. Thank you, three. Yeah, I feel like does that one really need a confirmation? I don't know. Because it's kind of like you confirm it by doing it, right? Yeah, well, I mean, but then again, I've been doing it for, like, four miles now, so... Oh, well. That's, I guess, a good question to ask. And by the way, like the uh, air boss script was not having none of our shenanigans. Yeah. Dude, that time I, I, I either I did something royally stupid or like they just gave us a really aggressive time. Cause, like I was just floating and trying to catch that. One. Yeah. Uh, that was that was definitely pretty harsh. Um, we're at four. Departure is uh, on the boulder. Departure 102, got you live, fair radar contact. 102, 090, Angel 6. 102, 40. Should be getting our needles call here shortly. 323, intercept needles. 
I guess, uh, like, if we had, like, the proper LSO platform, you would probably say more. But it's not going to make any sense to anybody if you're like, uh, needles up and on. Like, well, uh, we can't verify it, so good luck. Yeah, I think there's, like, two different kinds, too. There's, like, the IRS, or the ICLS, and then there's, like, like another kind that's different. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized this. Sorry, I'm trying to concentrate again. No, I know what you mean. Oh my, no. We're at 1.5. It is a point though, like, would I be calling the ball for you? I don't think I would. I don't know. I don't, I mean, we can ask. Yeah, so they'll, they'll probably know. Because, I mean, I can see it, right? Yeah. Go ahead and make a call. Trying to like, like seesaw this throttle, and then also, actually, you know what? I've read about this. You tell me you have the ball, and I say it. Three one three, copy. Contact departure. Push button three. Departure three two three. Flow 270, Angels 18. 270, Angels 18, 323. 102, departure, flow 270, Angels 17. 102, sorry, that was uh, 270 and Angels 18. That is 270 and Angels 17. 102, departure, anchor, present on. Um, 102, present position, and sorry, uh, you want me to climb into Angel 17? Uh, for 102, departure, uh, maintaining wind. Break, uh, 323, wind. What? 323? Uh, 323, uh, maintain flow 270, climb up to 87. 323. This is 87. Angel 17. Yeah, because he's like changing it out there. And just confirm Angel 17 for 323. Hey, Farm 323, Angel 17. Yeah, he changed it up on Aussie, I think. Gotcha. Yep. Yep, yeah. I Okay, yeah, I think that is um, how it's supposed to go. Like, you just let me know that you see it, and I make the call. Yeah, because uh, as soon as you said that, I, I realized it because I was like working. I uh, confirm I've got both three two three and one zero two up with me here on button three. One zero two. Three two three. All right, copy. All right, so you guys are blowing out there. Uh, so for one zero two, you go ahead and anchor your front and positive. Uh, and three two three, maintain your flow for two seven zero on the angel seven. Sure, Alright, so we'll go ahead and go through a debrief. Alright, so what do you guys think about that, uh, that, that, uh, that Um, so, I was kind of trying to, to get a little bit ahead of, uh, the, uh, the, the marker stack. So I was kind of pretty close to the carrier. It felt like, again, like, it had to be pretty aggressive. And I'm not sure if it was the route I chose to take to get to the stack, or it was just kind of, uh, just sort of how it happened, but it still felt like I was, had to be really aggressive to hit that push down and he still were a little late. Um, so I, I did want to see if you had any feedback on that, and, uh, go from there. Alright, copy, that's, uh, that's an OSUP right, 102. Uh, 323, three, stop it. Copy. Alright, so I've still got to get uh, voices with recognition and call on um, okay, so uh, we'll follow up on that. So uh, 102, so if you got any feedback or questions on that? 
Um, no, it just seemed uh, like um, and, uh, I got a little bit uh, lost uh, at say uh, with where the uh, carrier was relative to me, but I got it figured out. And then uh, I got, uh, I think, to the bearing uh, for the initial right about on time. Um, and other than that, I'm still trying to get my uh, ILS figured out. Okay, copy that. Uh, break, 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 three, three, go ahead, thank you. Got that. No, what did he say? Okay, uh, Anchor. so, to address, uh, Saul's question there as far as timing. So, what I was trying to do on that one was, uh, you know, I want to start to throw a little bit of things into the mixture and some of the training agendas. Um, so, the push times that I gave you, uh, was very aggressive. And actually, my intention was for you guys to take a look at how far you're away from your initial approach fix, take a look at the approach time, and call back up and say, uh, you know, hey, Marshall, I'm not going to do anything. That's what I was going for. But as it worked out, 102, you actually got your approach time at your approach fix pretty much right on time when you started to push. Damn it, also. So, stall to address your question. So, absolutely, that was the intention of that was to make it aggressive and to see if you realize that you weren't going to really be able to make that push time. Uh, but as it worked out, both of you bumped up your airspeed, you got there pretty much on time, so 323 three, we saw, I know you guys pushed about 30 seconds later, so, uh, but ultimately that's what I was trying to push for was to see if you recognize uh, and to follow up with Marshall that, hey, I'm not going to be able to do this. Uh, you know, now if I had adjusted the approach time down one minute earlier, uh, either one of them make it, but that was the intent of that, was to try to push you up in the next corner and see if you would recognize that. Does that answer your question? It does, so yeah, that, that actually makes uh, it a little bit better, because that, <laughs> so we basically uh, did exactly what you wanted, um, and it, I guess it was cool then to, A, kind of, I knew I was going in hot again, and when you made the call that we were closing in, I could see him. And, uh, you know, I tried to, I mean, we had the air break out, and I, I stopped my descent to try to uh, stem the speed. And what I wasn't sure is, uh, the question got, got answered where I was thinking was, it's like, man, do I, do I climb? And I was like, that doesn't seem like a good idea, especially if they're, you know, for at night and you can't see. So I kind of stayed with what, held what I got till you guys said to spin. So um, just wanted to idiot proof that, that thought process. Yep, absolutely. Um, so, you know, at any time that you're in the stack and you start to see things like that, that, you know, because, you know, approach and all those guys that are not invaluable on things, like, hey, approach, uh, I'm showing up right on top of this guy, say it's interesting. Um, and so, kind of to help out with that, which ended up, uh, it not working out, so for 102, uh, so the reason I dirtied you up earlier is because, uh, 323 said that they were going to be pushing 30 seconds. So I'm like, okay, well, that means I'm going to have about a minute and a half gap here. So that's why I'm going to I dirted you up early, was to try to get you slowed down a little bit quicker so that you would know, close up on that gap. But I think as it worked out, I don't know, it's stalling and we're still at a really high speed. Because when you called your approach, you were only about 30 seconds to the trail of them. Um, and then you were closing on them just simply because I dirtied one of you up earlier. Um, so absolutely, so a couple of different things that you could have done there. So... Um, so in this instance, it was easier just to do a less than 360. The reason being is because there's nobody in the stack behind you. Now, if somebody's behind you, that will not work because uh, essentially you put right in the middle of somebody else's uh, uh, airspace there. So the other option is uh, if I could just go ahead and pull you out of the pattern and just go ahead and blow you a reciprocal of 180 to put you, essentially put you on a downwind to blow you back toward the end of the stack again and find a hole and then put you in, in, in that hole. So that's an option there. Uh, or the other option is, uh, you know, hey, just go ahead and you're going to essentially just kind of take the move off pattern at that point, just get back up to altitude and just maintain your flow, get overhead bomb. I wouldn't recommend that because you can get overhead bomb. You've got a bunch of recovery tankers. Uh, if somebody bolters, they're going to be coming back up. So you really wouldn't want to do that. So what you want to do is kind of what we did is just pull you out of the pattern, uh, go ahead left 360 if able, or just go ahead and send you on a reciprocal downwind heading there, and then hook you back in, 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 a, in a spot that opens up, does that make sense? Yeah, and no, it worked out great, and it got, uh, you know, we got to use a little bit of the cadet level 3 uh, sort of post-holing to get down as well. Uh, 
So that was kind of cool. It, it was a, a little bit of a mix-up. Did have a question you just made me think of, because uh, in Calendar, like, kind of, you know, we get to talk. Uh, uh, when you say take approach speed, is that sort of a formality or, because I'm, usually when you guys say that, and if I'm dirty, I'm kind of already there. It, it, is that wrong or, um, you know, for me, it takes a little bit to get this F14 on speed, so I just want to see if it's something I need to polish up or uh, how to interpret that call. So really, you know, for like the, you know, so for example, in the so you can dirty up to 250 knots, right? Um, it, it, you know, that's why the call comes out at uh, 80 and you go ahead and dirty up, uh, because at that point you should be flying about 250 knots. So between 80 BME down to about 60 BME, uh, you're going through that transition of dirty and up, your gear down, your flaps down, and you're starting to adjust your air speed absolutely at that point. It's just more of a sugar call, if you will. Okay, you're 60 BME, you need to start to really think, you need to really get your air speed down to that approach. Your speed is more of a backup call. It, it, Understood. And uh, the other thing we weren't sure, does that require a, a confirmation for talking about like if, if we say take approach speed, is that what you're asking? Yeah, if we just acknowledge with our airport number. Yep, that's all you gotta do, is just really acknowledge with your side number there, uh, you know, 102, 323. Uh, yeah, just go ahead. And so go back to the other question we're talking about uh, with uh, with the spacing there with the left 360. So you had asked, you know, hey, you're sitting there thinking about uh, going back up the altitude to do this. Absolutely not do that because you remember. So like I said, it's easy for the two of you because there's nobody behind you or there's nobody behind dash number two there. Um, but if there's 15, 20 aircraft behind you, what you do not want to start doing is climbing that needs to be through altitudes. So remember, you've got an entire stack that's coming down behind you. If you start climbing up the different altitudes, you can potentially run the, uh, the midair with, with uh, co altitude times and stuff. Makes sense, yeah. I guess, I guess that it, it was an easy, good decision to make because I could see him. But yeah, definitely if it was dark out and I got that call, it might be a little bit of a, uh, you know, oh crap, oh crap. Right. And so, so go back, go anchor a little bit here. So, you know, the purpose of that was to give you a tight push time. Uh, and truth be told, I didn't think you were going to make it, but you actually did. You're uh, so kudos for making that push time there for one of the two. Um, but that was also an opportunity from an approach perspective to, all right, we got, we, you're not going to be able to make your approach times, and then from an approach controller, I need to adjust your approach times. And so, um, if I had done your approach times, so you can imagine, so on that last run, so one of those two push time was a time two five, and three push time was two six. All right, so if you've got to make later push times, so I'll have to talk about it the other night. So if I've got to make, if I've got to push your if I have to adjust push time later, at what part of the stack do I want to start assigning the push time? Uh, would that be the first guy or the last guy? And why? I hope he's talking to I guess it would have to do with the uh, fuel states of the uh, airplane mm, and the sorry. priority that you need to get them down in. Mm -hmm. Well, that's always going to go into the initial setup of the stack. So if people are checking in with fuel states, um, you're going to put people in the stack based on their Absolutely. You know, if I know we talk about it, we're just going to do a check in to which 102, 103, 104. You know, that's not how it happens in the real world. The reason being is because uh, if, I put, if I'm suspecting that, then 323 checks in and he's got a low state, you know, and he's legal plus two, well, he's going to be priority, so I'm going to put him in first to stack. Um, but that always goes to the initial setup of the stack and all that stuff. But if you've got to adjust times, it, it's, a, it's a different reason of why. It's where you're going to start your position and where you're adjusting your time stack. So, any other thoughts? So, I guess the question would be, you know, if um, if someone needs to delay their time, then are you deciding whether you want to put them back at the end of the stack or ripple the time through everybody in the stack? Yep. So we're getting. So now we're getting there. So ripple the time throughout the stack for everybody. So who would you? So if you're going to make a later push time, who would get the first update? Guy. Um, the next guy in line, or I mean, I don't know if you go from top to bottom or bottom to top. So, so to kind of help out with this, so let's take this uh, the this evolution that we just had. So 102, 102 push time was two five, and three two three push time was five two six. All right, so let's say between the both of you, 
call up and like, hey, 102 calls up and says, hey, Marshall, I'm not going to be able to make this approach time. All right, well now, okay, because, so now I've got to give a later time. So now I've got to adjust approach time 102. So now if I say, okay, 102 uh, updated approach time, time 26. All right, so what did I just do there? I just now essentially gave the exact same approach time for 102 and 323. Now, if for whatever reason 323 misses that comp and, and, and he doesn't realize that, now you've got two aircraft with effective approach time at the same time. Where I'm going with that is if you make your times later, always start at the end of the stack. You're going to ripple those times throughout the stack. Start at the end of the stack. So 323, updated approach time, 27. 102, updated approach time, 26. Reason is, is so that you can get those the conflictions in time. And time. Yeah. Whereas if you start at the beginning of the stack and you get them a later time, you now have given them a push time that you can conflict somebody else in the stack behind. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, 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 so you're basically working top yeah, down. That makes a lot of sense. Top down or, until you get to where you want to slot them in. Right. Now, the opposite is, is if you get an earlier approach time, you need to start at the bottom of the stack and then work your way back. Uh, because again, of that peak of friction of time. Alright, any other questions or comments on that approach? Now, have you got time for me to run through with stall the setup on the ILS real quick? Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Alright, so I got the channel 12, and then I'm in landing mode, and then on the steering command, do you run that in um, attack in, or do you switch that? Uh, switch it to AWL for the center one. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And then uh, on both the... Um, HSI and the uh, HUD, you're going up to the ILS, or are you leaving it in the, uh, with the ACL? Um, I believe you go up, but right now for some reason both work. Okay. I think I got it to be. Actually, you have a state of length, right? Good. I do, actually. Uh, any other questions or comments or thoughts or feedback uh, from that run from 102 or 323 perspective? Um, real quick, and this is to uh, 102. Um, I, I think uh, we, we're data linked with the carrier, which is why both uh, work. So just to confirm, probably just the ball to ILS. Both switch each other. Oh. Yeah, I was trying it either way and it wasn't working, but I was leaving it tack and mode, so that would be why. Yeah, that would be it. Alright, let me, uh, Sensei, you got any comments or anything? Uh, the only thing I had was, uh, I should have been, uh, more quicker to do that, uh, deconfliction of the separation between, uh, 323 and 102. Yeah, yeah. that's all I have. Okay, copy. Alright, Hawaiian, you got it? Yeah, so stall 2K was coming in hot for that initial command. Damn. I mentioned trying to use his air brake. If air brakes are good, air brakes dump speed at about 8 to 10 knots per second. So if you're coming in hot and you're 50 or 80 knots over what you should be, you should not be using your air brake. You should be using high G, high induced, yeah. angle, uh, high induced drag, high angle of attack maneuvers to dump that speed quickly. Right, and, and that was the first thought because you told me that before, but then the second thought was I was kind of putting myself in a place that I can't see anything, so that didn't seem like a good idea. Or you saying go left or right. Right, you'd be pulling a high frequency snake lift, and probably just one cycle of that will dump 50 to 80 numbers. Okay, yeah, got it. Definitely uh, we'll use that next time. I didn't know that was so true. I guess we are also deconflicted, so it's not too big a deal. Also, he needs kind of like IG to so he didn't hit me. Alright, any other comments or questions? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, if not, so uh, well, let's go ahead and we'll do one more evolution. This time we'll go hook down on this and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll do our traps on this. Uh, and if there's any bolters, then I'll be a good opportunity to uh, practice the bolter uh, procedures as well. Uh, but do as best you can to catch the traps, and then uh, we'll kind of end this evolution today. And then what we'll do, uh, Sensei, without you realizing it, so, Sensei, I'll let you run this one. I'll let you do uh, Marshall, uh, establish what procedures, the uh, approach times, and things like that. 
Uh, so we'll essentially flip rolls. So since you've got an archer, marshal, you've got like 15, and I'll take less. Copy. And before we start, you want to go over at least the altitude procedure for bolters, since I've seen people bolter or, I mean, they didn't trap, but they climb straight up to like 2,000. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, if you uh, bolter, or if you get waved off, uh, you're going to maintain uh, your configuration, your dirty configuration. Your gear's going to stay down, your hook stays down. Uh, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to maintain your heading, which is the expected final bearing, so you should still be flowing. Um, uh, 3067. Uh, so maintain that heading. You're going to climb up the needles 1.2. It's, uh, it's the same altitude that you're descending down to for the approach. You're going to climb up the needles 1.2. You're going to maintain that straight level flight, uh, you know, at uh, your approach speeds that you've got there. And then you should expect that your uh, approach will go ahead and give you uh, essentially a reciprocal 180 floating back down to the left or the downwind slope. If not, uh, if you don't hear any pop, then at uh, 4 PME or 2 knots or 2 minutes uh, at, after you do your bolter, then you can go ahead and assume and go ahead and execute your own left 180 to uh, intercept the downwind, and then you're going to fly uh, by the carrier there. And at the advance, then go ahead and establish confident approach, let them know what you're doing. And then approach, as you're flowing down the 180 and you come in on the beam of the carrier, then approach is going to butt hook you in into the expected final bearing. Uh, and that will typically take place uh, probably outside of about the of year, so and that's going to allow you to get in there, intercept that expected final bearing, and set up on your needles. Does uh, that make sense? One or two. Three, two, two, three. All right. Yeah. So bottom line, uh, climb up to Angels 1.2 uh, speed, uh, 4 DME. Uh, go ahead and uh, left down land and establish comp. All right, if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and execute this. And again, this is going to be a hook down pass for the, uh, the trap. Uh, but if you bolt or wave off, then we'll execute and practice that as well. Uh, so say you've got the radio. There you go. In hindsight, I'm so glad you're here. Contact Marshall on. Five and ready. One zero two. All right, where are we? Two six zero. Marshall one zero two is uh, mothers. Oh, I can't do that. One one Party zero time. at twenty seven and angels one five. One zero two Marshall radar contact case three recovery CV one approach expected final bearing three zero seven altimeter two nine or nine or two. One zero two Marshall moms one two seven twenty one six thousand expected approach time one seven. Button one seven. Time check fourteen fifty seven thirty three thirty four thirty five. Need to switch. One zero two. Uh, Marshall Mothers one two seven at twenty one. Angel six. Time uh, seventeen and button seventeen. One zero two. Marshall 323, Mark 8 Moms 240, 21, Angel 17. You'll stay 4.8. 323, radar contact. Case recovery CV1 approach. Expected final bearing 307, altimeter 2902. 303, Marshall Moms 127, 22, 7000. Expected approach time, 1-8, button 17, correction button 1-5. Time check, 14-58, 43-44-45.
323, Marshal 8, 12722, Angel 7, expected time 18, button 15. 323. Alright, got all that? Uh, 7,000, and just, just wait for you to tell me stuff. Pretty much. We've got some good time. Yeah, I want to turn right, but... Marshall, time check. Time will be 15.02 in 20 seconds. Recovery. Transmit that. Dude, as soon as you said that, I looked over it and yeah, I thought it was like we're gonna have independence there. I mean, he is the SRS owner, you can probably hear everything you're saying. <laughs> yeah. He's probably, probably like, trying to punk us. Paying attention, heads down. Oops, speaking of, I'm trying to make a turn. Maybe that, that's what he was trying to tell us. Exactly, it worked. This is actually taking 90 seconds. Argo, 
Just ask me. Thirteen minutes. picture for what my throttle uh, should be at to kind of maintain cruise control here. Grease pencil. They'll write it on the canopy. Yeah, that's uh, what it, what they were talking about, like in fighter pilot pilot podcast. I was thinking, wow, that's that would that would be perfect. So So 10 minutes for a 7 minute holding pattern. So Yeah, we're probably going to want to slow it down a little bit. At least enough that we can kind of make Zigzags on the way. One zero one. You left the approach corridor. Got my air boss. 
Wait, no, we should be. Sitting pretty. Yeah, it doesn't know that we're. I think it still thinks we're commencing. Because it got messed up before. That is about uh, a little bit less than five minutes. Okay. So that should actually end up being relatively good. Yeah. Oh, this kitten. He loves wires. I'm gonna need to get like one of those. I don't know, spicy sprays that you put on wires and cats are like, nope, not gonna bite this anymore. Because <laughs> you know, I, I might need that VR sensor. Four minutes. Possibly slightly earlier. Alright. Tell, Tell me when. when. Okay, actually, 99 time check. Time will be 15, 12, and 30 seconds. Like, I can't, like now, it's not. Yeah, I'd say Two minutes. Yeah, so we're not bad. We're a mile off. Uh, I think we're doing all right. One minute to push. Less than one minute. One zero two. Yeah, we're at four hundred. Oh wait, we only got to go to uh, 22 nautical miles in that time. Correct. Yeah, so we're alright. Yeah, right. yeah. We got like a minute, uh, 20? Correct.
Seconds. You ready to commence in ten? Descent looks good. Yeah, uh, that's why I was asking. I didn't know if he should be, because he was a little slow early. He should, really shouldn't be doing that until he's at 10, which. Good to know. We're at 1300. Slaps like to make you go up. Alright, laps are down, DLC's up. Gear is probably down, I hear it going crazy. <laughs> my needles are still on point, it actually made me lose track of my go velocity after doing this. 
dropping just below 800 here. Zero indicated. Your ejection seat is armed. <laughs> two, two, three. Correction. Uh, you're in a dirty up. My bad. Three, two, three. Yeah. Approach speed in. Uh, Feels like your AOA is on point here. Okay, that can't be. No, I, I think Osipik's having trouble. Okay. Speaking of which, we're at four. You're low. Yeah, he was super wobbly. I'm on the TCS. Intercept needles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. My job's easy. Alright, so, uh, just going through it. Got the hooks down. Everything looks good. Sweet. We're at three. And just let me know when you sight the ball and I'll make the call at the three quarters. You want to see it? I never really see it. Just come on. I mean, we can always say Clara just to make them do no, something. I'm kidding. No, that's fine. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't see it, see it actually, ever actually ever since this match. Alright. So I think you see it now? Sure. <laughs> I trust you. Welcome aboard. One zero. 
Out of here. Three, two, three, green deck. Three, two, three, zero, two, two, three, two, three. What do you say? I have no idea. Uh, three, two, three, say again. Report when clear of the active. That's green deck. Uh, yeah. I think I did, but yeah. maybe did I transmit it in the wrong side? I don't know. This is cool. Oh, yeah. This is going to have to be. What's that? Do you have a parking brake that I can still reach in this patch? No, I mean, the other thing is you can kind of slide off the carrier. I don't know. TCS, it was kind of like, oh god, he's gonna go into the ship. Is he desynced? Am I just like lagging here? But in all fairness, man, like that dude just like learned how to do this like a couple yeah. Years ago. yeah, exactly. Alright, copy. So I'll go ahead and cover one thing that since they was asking me 
PayPal uh, on the intercom channel. Um, so uh, 102 uh, had the halter during that last pass. Uh, so a good opportunity to execute the uh, halter wave off pattern there. So, uh, so since I know you weren't listening to my approach, but essentially the comps in place. So 102 said Volker, Volker, Volker. Uh, climbed him and has approached climbed the monthly 4.2, maintained the current heading of flowing uh, 307. Uh, and then told uh, 102, all right, once you're established at Angels 1.2, uh, go ahead and let me know. At Angels 1.2, uh, conducted a left hand turn, reciprocal heading of the BRC, which is expected, which is uh, essentially 127, which is a partial rating for mom. So uh, 102, turn left, heading 127, maintaining 1.2. Alright, and so now he's going essentially flowing on a downwind pattern from that. Uh, so now you're working with 323, get him covered. All right, so as I'm watching 102 there, uh, I'm looking at about, once he gets about 45 degrees off, uh, off of his back uh, quarter panel there, uh, and assuming that there is a hole in the approach, and this one was, because there's somebody else in the pattern. At that point, then I can button hook, or I can conduct the left-hand turn from 102, and essentially it's uh, turn left, intercept, and make the final um, So it's over to 102 to execute that turn, and intercept, and final uh, Now, feedback for myself on that. Oh, can you say something where... There we go, just started getting feedback. However, on this one, I think you intercepted. Came in probably around about 2 p.m. or so to carry yourself. But I hooked you in probably a little too early on that one. But we can kind of be in daytime here. The visuals, we've got the good indications. However, we do this next week, it's going to be a different story. Because, again, I'm going to be able to see the characters on the outside. Uh, so I uh, I caught ninety percent of the uh, of the comp traffic. It was uh, that one turn in at forty five uh, that I missed, so that's what I didn't know how you knew to to do with that there. God, thank you. Gotcha. Uh, for uh, so for one zero two, any issues with the volt or wave off pattern or getting back in? Um, no, it's just, um, yeah, the first time around, I, uh, the F-14's getting really rocky, uh, as you slow down, and, um, so I tried turning the stay movement off Ooh, on no, the, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, try to kill you. on the roll, and, no. uh, that made it worse, uh, yeah, the second time. <laughs> oh, that's no, why I went no, older, no. because it was getting a little squirrely. Um, and then, other than that, the 1200 comes up really quick, uh, keeping it dirty helps out, though. Copy. All right, something else I've got to take a look at, uh, this is for the approach controllers here. Like I said, I've been kind of saying, you know, it's all based on the time that like I said, you want to shoot for a one minute recovery of getting an aircraft down on the deck for one minute. That's what you want to shoot for. Um, I haven't been doing it throughout the rest of the evolution this morning. I wish I had, but I did do it on the last evolution. Um, so this is why it comes important, you know, especially for us without having LSOs and all that stuff. It's calling a boulder or there's trap um, so when 102 put out that boulder call, I hit my little stopwatch here because I was just kind of curious how far behind uh, 323 actually was. Um, so since this is something we've got to take a look at, because you know, we're looking at the lot of the and we get that good range of bearing there, and it's got that good timing on there of about one minute. So it's like, okay, that looks like they've got some preparation. However, boulder, uh, boulder. when I did the stopwatch, from the time that uh, 102 called boulder and 323 called trap, just over two minutes. Um, so that's a little, that's a long in the shooting, uh, more than double the time that you want to try to accomplish. Um, so it's something we probably need to go back and take a little bit better look at from um, the approach perspective and a lot of ADC readouts and things like that. You know, how accurate and how true mm -hmm. is that one minute separation? But if in fact it is true, then in theory, from that boulder call until three to three traps, it should have been about a one minute. Uh, one minute time, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could expect something, you know, maybe one minute, ten seconds or something, but when it's double the time, something's a little bit off there. Yeah. So it's something that, uh, you know, I want to think. Yeah, we did get slowed down early. Uh, but overall, the evolution, everything but, went really well today. Um, you know, so we threw a little bit of the delta there in yeah. the last one. Uh, so then we talked about adjusting the times there. Uh, so since they had given you an initial time from the time you put uh, checked can you in, close that? about that a 20-minute push time. Uh, we can see you out there, you know, your holding patterns, and you can get a couple of there. So it's like, well, let's go ahead and execute this adjusting. Gotcha. Uh, 
uh, necessary to throw a little bit of wrench in there. But overall, I think everybody executed everything really well today. Uh, and kind of like as we always see these, you know, from the first evolution until the last, everybody um, gets better exponentially. And uh, so I hope you guys learned some stuff today. Uh, yeah, uh, 323 three, three here, here, front seat, seat for, for sure. sure. That was awesome. awesome. Thank, Thank you, guys. You guys. Uh, Sensei, you got any final departing shots or remarks? Uh, nope. I learned uh, more today. It wasn't so much a helmet fire like the first time. Uh, I did the, the case three, so um, it was definitely helpful <laughs> having you teach me how to do that again. Um, I had a couple of uh, uh, little errors that I um, identified, and uh, one of them was a timing error. Uh, 323, I slowed you down. Um, <laughs> and that's why I think there was that two minute separation between the uh, bolter and the landing, uh, was I slowed 323 down a bit early uh, when 102 showed early before, I think it was about 12 DME. Right. Yep, and it just all comes down to that constant check between the range and bearing between the contact, checking the airspeed, uh, you know, and I think you guys saw today, saw today of how important it is to maintain those airspeeds, uh -huh. because if you nope. don't, uh, your stack is going to start to collapse and expand. Like I said, it's not a big deal for two aircraft, but you can work with that, but imagine if you've got 15, 20 guys that's come down the street behind you, and one little thing that gets off, it's just going to have a ripple effect throughout the rest of the, uh, the, the uh, recovery. Yeah, Roger. So, how do I um, speed up somebody once they get to that point and they're pretty much right at the um, take approach speed anyway? There's really not much I can do to speed them up. So now, if there were other aircraft behind them, I'd have to start extending that and slowing everybody down. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, you don't want to start speeding anybody up because they've got to get slowed down to get on their approach and to actually do the recovery. So at that point, you pretty much have to walk whoever is there at that, that point in the approach. So you're going to have to work backwards from those guys sequentially behind them and start adjusting their timing, start adjusting their speed, uh, and things like that. And then, like I said, you know, like that one evolution, if you have to, start pulling somebody out of the stack and pulling them out to, get the, to build back up some of that separation. But again, things you've got to take into account. Dual state is always going to be the big part of that because you don't want to pull somebody that out of a stack that may be Eagle plus one or Eagle plus two, you put them at the end of the stack. So you've got to take all these other factors into consideration. Copy. Um, question from the peanut gallery in, in terms of what you guys are talking about. Would it make sense, like, uh, since you can't really, like you said, slow us down, but maybe delay our, our slowing down, like, to maybe, like, request, hey, don't dirty up it at 8 to 10 DME, wait till 5, or does that create, uh, like, a safety hazard? Um, so you could do that, and that's why, you know, there's no hard set stone with all of the DMEs and the evolution some of those things, um, but again, you kind of you have to take it also from your perspective as you're sitting in that cockpit. You're like, crap, I'm getting down to five DME, four DME. Crap, I got to get dirtied up. You know, I got to slow down. You know, there comes approaches where the, there's a point that you've got to focus on flying those needles by trying to adjust your altitude, adjust your airspeed, and trying to do all of this stuff. So you know, it's kind of an art there. Um, you know, I would me personally, I would say from a pilot's perspective, anything about six DME. You need, to, you need to essentially start getting your aircraft yeah. on speed and a configuration to get lined up and intercept needles and start communicating with the LSO. So, uh, so anything within about 6 DME, I would be very, very hesitant to do anything with that aircraft. I would more start working backwards, uh, you know, from, from the aircraft that are in trail. So it's the same thing. Alright. Cool, thank, thank you. Yeah, that makes sense. Alright, Hawaiian, you got anything? Yeah, I, uh, for stalls, I was flying with him for several circuits. It seems like um, as you were descending, you'd level off at a thousand feet. Is that? Um, yeah. So I would. Um, Another one. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. So I would level off um, after five thousand. I would slow my descent uh, two thousand feet per minute, and then I would level off uh, between eight and twelve hundred feet uh, until. Basically, right, you should be at twelve hundred. 
Okay, so I was about 200 feet too low. Until you intercept those needle. Oops. I said hold at uh, 1200 until you intercept needles. Yeah, I'm sorry, I think uh, you got stepped on a little. So you said hold 1200 until you intercept some needles. So this approach is what I have is trash. Okay, yeah, the one that I have is. Uh, Any other questions or comments? 1200 up and down, so. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got a stupid Air Force one. Oh, uh, oh, you're coming down on the uh, carrier alignment wise. Are you basically treating the movement of the carriers like a crosswind and grabbing to uh, set your alignment? Well, it's like that. Yep, you're always going to be flying with a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of a crab there and a little bit of uh, left or right wing right. down there to maintain that. That that's a trick. Yep, absolutely. Any other questions? Nope, looking forward to doing it in the dark. Awesome. Alright, so if you guys want, uh, we'll go ahead and meet back up in Discord. Um, uh, I will only be there for just a couple of minutes, uh, then I gotta duck out. But uh, we'll meet back up in Discord for any uh, big evolutions, or if you just wanna have, ask more questions, we'll do that for a little bit. So uh, we'll meet back up in Discord. Copy. Yeah, uh, so the next thing I do is I promise I'll have my intercom button sorted. I really don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, weird. I mean, having it on hot mic is fine as long as we're not also talking on Discord. Oh, okay. Okay, why well, right, guys. Uh, check. well, like I said, I hope you had fun today. Uh, sometimes you can get a little boring, a little monotonous. You just go out there and set up some holding patterns. Um, but it's a key thing to practice, uh, especially if you want to, you know, do the things that Hawaiian has gotten set up here. You know, it's important that you practice the mundane stuff. Um, it's easy just to just kind of blow that off. And but anyway, so I hope you had fun. No, nah, it was good. Um, two things, though. One, um, kudos to Asupik because it was like <laughs> four days ago. He's like, yeah, I just started the F-14 by pushing buttons. So he's killing it. And then uh, also I'd like to shout out to Ann Callen because having a Rio is like cheating. And before I was, you know, <laughs> he was like, hey, you know, do you need me for this? I'm like, oh, no, it'll be fine. But let me tell you, it was super, super, super helpful. Um, so, yeah, and it definitely wasn't boring, I don't think, for either seat. No, I had fun. It was, I got to be chauffeured around and relax and uh point out when stall was uh, making mistakes yep yeah. and it's always helpful to have that second set of hands second set of eyes to back you up on all those stuff and i mean even in the back of the hawkeye you know we had a crew of five but even in the back you know you had a pilot co-pilot up front but even in the back it's like okay hey i uh, show you a thousand feet to uh you know to our assigned altitude and it's just constantly backing each other up mm -hmm. uh it, even from a navigation purposes the more that you have help punching in and setting frequencies and dials and all that stuff, that enables you as a pilot more time to focus on actually flying what you need to fly correctly. Yeah, that was it for sure. And I didn't appreciate it until I, you know, because you, you fly these things like either yourself or whatever, and you don't appreciate just how much radio work actually needs to go into it and having him do that. Like even the one time I had to call the ball, like I was mildly annoyed. I'm like, this sucks, you know, and then I felt bad for right. him. Right. <laughs> But yeah, it, it was it was cool. <laughs> and then being able to have him, like you said, uh, like almost idiot proofed me. Like when when those uh, those times were aggressive, I was like, hey, man, like I'm thinking to turn and left like here. Does that track? And he's like, yes or no. You know, so it, it's yeah, can't can't be overstated <laughs> how helpful. Or is. or as one case was, it was like, yes, wait, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. I was having problems with the comms uh, because uh, it has an eight-way hat uh, that it's bound to normally or by default. And so getting it right on that straight down uh, position was a little hard. So uh -huh. I added the binds to – so if it's off to the left or the right, it will also key. So that 
helped out a ton on making sure I was actually talking to you guys. I never got the intercom button figured out, even like in SR. It was super weird. Like I had to leave it on hot mic. So if I figure that out, I'll I'll let you know. I, or if you did, please let me know because we just couldn't get it to work. Well, I'm um, I'm using the warthog, and so the the hat that it's bound to is an eight position. So not only is it down, but also like down left or down right. So if you're not perfectly straight up and down, then you're not hitting the sweet spot. So I just bound it with three different buttons. So if it's down or down left or down right, it still keys the mic. Um, and then the intercom, I think, is to the right, um, that same hat. I mean, I, I had a different problem. No, I, I've been on the four-way oh, okay. mic switch on the, the throttle, but it, it – uh, no, even up, like I was hearing a click, but just SRS wouldn't engage. I mean, it could have just been I, – I didn't want to restart it because we already did the transponders. I didn't want to mess anybody up. It was more like a, a comment, just realizing, oh, shit, my intercom doesn't work, and, um, you know. Yeah, and I need to find a way to get the transponder to work correctly. I'm thinking that since the F-14 does model it, that SRS won't let you put it in manually. It, and s without a back seater, I can't dial it in. It, it did, because mine worked. So it sounds like we both have problems that fall in Hawaiian probably don't care about. We can take offline, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have scheduled on thursday a refresher course from 9 to 11 p.m eastern for all this case three stuff anyone have problems with that time block uh, hawaiian what are you saying are you saying that as a us going out and flying this again just to make sure from my um expectation uh it's possible but i was anticipating just whatever questions people have and whatever okay all right we'll do it however you want but I mean, yeah, we can fly it. So on that topic, this map that you just flew is now part of the rotation on DCS server. So if you want to fly this map and it's not up, you pop in and use the F10 commands to load the next map. Oh, cool. Nice. Similarly, if you pop in and you don't want to do case three training and you want to do regular Navy stuff, uh, the case three map, you pop into F10 and there's an option to load the next how does that work if uh, you got uh, two or more people that want to do different map loads? You're going to have to kind of coordinate that amongst yourself. Gotcha. Do BFM, the loser loses. There you go. Now, on this on this server, is the uh, Ocean Nav map also on this one? Uh, not by default. I have to manually load it. Gotcha. Okay, so after Thursday... I will add it to the rotation so there will be four maps total because there's the regular Navy training map daylight, regular Navy training map evening. There's this map, which is case three daytime. I'll add a fourth map to the rotation, which is case three recovery night. So you can get a preview of what next weekend is going to be like. And when you're loading the next map, basically you're, you're just going through those sequentially, right? You can't 